So on to after the repeat. So uh, now we get to play against the G string. So we just get a little bit of a rest from the constant pure double stopping of the left hand. So of course one of the strings are open, so this helps a little bit. So let's, start, let's try with a, a slow method again to start with and see what comes up. So of course we're going shifting up with one and three, so we're just going to be aware of the change of major minor thirds plus the contracting of the left hand, left hand as we shift up. Let's come back down. Expand, of course. And then we're back into the actual double stopping again, so it doesn't last long. Let's try it with the tremolo. down so of course we're thinking of moving into the bridge but we've got to go away at the same time for descending shifts so you've got to kind of put that together and get the right feeling in the sound. So let's go on with a slow method, octave frame in the left hand. My thumbs staying pretty much still there. So as I shift down, maybe just a little bit of movement, but to get back to that first finger, you see, it's because it's so momentary, I don't want to waste, waste my thumb movement. Okay, so continuing. So you see, my thumb's already in place pretty much for that, where I need to be. Now we're twisted more because we're around the A string, more difficult. skip second and then make one movement back to first. So let's try with the tremolo. to get the stretch. But it has pretty much stayed in place throughout that passage. Again, good resistance here. We need the four consistent and the two moving back. So when we move the two back, you feel like the four's moving up. It's not of course. shift movement with the thumb.
let's go on again the slow method first so lots of octave framework here again notice my thumb not really moving here and now I come back I moved up but then let the fingers come down and now of course I'll come back again Clinging on for life, the second finger. When we're in the lower position, we have to use the thumb more conventionally because the distances are, of course, greater. Okay, let's try this with the tremolo. My bow is weighted towards the upper string at this point. Again, we get a little bit of a break from the left hand because we're just against the open D and at least it's the, uh, the open string is the lower string now so we don't need the uh, extra twist. Again, judging major and minor thirds with the shifting up and down. So maybe I move the thumb to second, not to first because then I've got to go up again. You know, this can always change. You can, you can change your mind on when you move the thumb. You might not even think about it, but it's just having an awareness of not overusing it, not using it more than necessary. Make sure whatever happens, no part of your fingers touch that D string. movement to second there. And then we're up to the upper right. Okay, so let's try it with the tremble. So now we're up playing the original theme but an octave higher. Very difficult for the fifth, playing the fifth on the first finger as we go higher because of the strings getting wider apart. So really good strength there, good balance between the strings. Let's try the slow method, see what comes up. So like the beginning, quite a stretch there. As it's higher, it's not so bad I suppose. Still my thumb still. Now I'll come back. Again, I don't really move the thumb back to first there. So I can easily get back up again. stretching, keep that four consistent, work the one back, keep the thumb steady. And still more. Now I move back. It's one little tip about this big string crossing. He writes the G string and then this top fifth. So to make sure the D doesn't ring out, which will sound messy, just dampen it slightly with the third finger. So 
So I'm balanced the top string with the bow. open G, of course the lower string, so I don't need the extra twist either. Nice. So let's try. Notice the thumb's not really moving. I don't really even have to twist to go all the way up here because I'm not using the fourth. If I was, I'd have to twist more, so I like using the one and three here. Now a little more twist playing against the upper string and using the four. And then we get to the last little bit. So let's try this with the tremolo. So like I say, very beautiful atmospheric caprice. So these are some, hopefully some helpful ways to work on it. And that finishes the first set of his caprices. He wrote six, six, and 12. But let's go for it next time for number seven. <laughs>